This video is sponsored by my favorite website creator Squarespace, the best place to go when you want to get a domain or create a gorgeous website or an online store. Do you usually read a lot more during the summer? For me, nothing beats leaning back in the sun chair with a good book and just wasting hours with iced coffee or a glass of iced cold rosé. If you need some tips on what to pick up this summer, I've listed six books in order of difficulty. Two easy reads, two a little bit more demanding, and two demanding super focus. All of them just delightful though. So here we go. I just love this book, Vladimir by Julia May Jonas, and immediately from chapter one, I was sucked in. It's set in a quiet US university town where a 59-year-old married English professor falls hard for the new interesting teacher and writer Vladimir. The book is so juicy and doesn't shy away from being scandalous or morally ambiguous, and it is so refreshing reading an author who discusses these tricky issues without trying to come off as preachy or propagandy, if that makes sense. But the biggest takeaway for me was the discussions on books and writing and being in a university environment. I go crazy for that stuff. Plus, it's super easy breezy to read. Overall, recommend, recommend. Short, fun, easy, and completely delicious. Yes, Breakfast at Tiffany still is just as much a delight today as it was when it was written. It's more the length of a long novella, so if you have an afternoon, you can finish it in one super romantic sitting. Don't be fooled by the Audrey Hepburn movie though, the book is darker and more ragged than the Hollywoodized film version. All to the better. I find the portrayal of Hollywood likely in book form to be just a joy to read. Capote's language is so witty and fun and also strangely moving. No better way to lace away a summer day under parasol, if you ask me. By the way, if you want me to make more book videos or creating writing videos, tell me in the comments on what themes you want me to bring up and please give me a thumbs up, it's super helpful. One book that demands a little bit more focus to get the most out of is 1004, which is my favorite out of learners books that I've read so far. It has a gorgeous book within a book within a book format where you never really know what is autobiographical and what is author writing fiction. It's very clever in its format, but what I truly love about this book is the mood. Ben Lerner has a way of creating this instant thick atmosphere where you feel like you're sort of transported into his own mood, if that makes sense. I found this book touching, honest, and very, very human. Heads up though, the very first chapter starts with some horrible octopus eating, but the rest of the book is very compassionate and beautiful, if you ask me. If you're into lyrical prose, you should try Open Water, which is a contemporary love story set in South London. The prose is written in second person, so instead of she is walking or I was walking, it's you are thinking. You know what I mean? Personally, I'm not a fan of prose in second person, but I want to recommend Open Water anyway, because Nelson has a way of truly make you feel stuff. For me, it was not so much the romance as the depiction of the struggles and the unfairnesses that our main character meets because of his situation. I won't go into details, but yeah, by the end of it, I certainly did choke up. Have you read it? Tell me your thoughts in that case. Moving into even more demanding books, let's talk about Second Place. It's not that Cusk writes in demanding or obscure prose in any way, it's more that the reasoning and the observations she's making takes slow reading to truly digest, know what I mean? For instance, I wouldn't read Cusk while having a glass of wine because I wouldn't be able to focus enough to absorb the points she's making fully with a non-clear head. Cusk is a morning coffee type of author, if you ask me. What I love about Second Place is its unusual and quite brave honesty. Our protagonist doesn't need us to like her or even fully agree with or understand her. She's telling us how she's feeling and it's just a very beautiful slice of humanity. I think I prefer Second Place to her earlier outline trilogy actually. Although there is a scene early on in the book about the devil on a train that I was not so sure about. The rest of the book is glorious though. If you've read it, tell me what you thought of that specific scene, please. Henry James is known for being a demanding and somewhat bewildering author, but he's so well worth the read, if you ask me. His earlier works is so much easier, so I'd recommend maybe starting with Washington Square, for example, and move up to Turn on the Screw before taking on the super long brick of a novel, Portrait of a Lady. What I love about James is his intensely beautiful, quiet moments and observations. I feel like he has such a masterly hold on how to, in beautiful language, put a finger 
literature on human nature. I think that's my favorite type of literature, where gorgeous words meet super sharp observations on human behavior. Those moments is the reason I pick up books to begin with. Great stuff. What about you? Have you read any of these books? What did you think? And are there any other ones that you haven't read that you think you might give a go? Let's talk more books in the comments. Hit me with your best summer reads, please. And give me a little thumb if you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to click subscribe if you're new to my channel. Do you want to create a beautiful site? Maybe start your own book blog? If so, you should definitely do it with Squarespace. They have great blogging tools to share your stories, photos and videos to make it easy to reach your audience. You can also auto post your content to Twitter, Facebook or Tumblr and simply schedule your posts for them to be properly tagged and the descriptions and titles will show up correctly. You can of course add your social media accounts to your site so it's easy for your readers to find you everywhere. Squarespace also have great traffic analytics so that you can see how many people are visiting your site, how long they're staying for, where they're coming from and what they're interested in, like books or fashion or minimalism, for example. So what are you waiting for? Go get your free trial today at squarespace.com and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash jennymustard to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Okay, thanks for hanging out today. Enjoy your calming iced coffee reading moments this summer, babes. Puss puss and hey do.